My teacher didn't help me when I asked, and I still don't understand how any of these answers can be right. That's a troubling opening line, if ever there was one. Let's get the briefing. Work with your partner, I guess that's you, to determine which key features will be the same for any pair of perpendicular lines. Probably a good place to start is making sure we know what perpendicular lines are. So go ahead and crack open your mathematics dictionary. And here we are on page 291, perpendicular lines, two straight lines which intersect so as to form a pair of equal adjacent angles. And of course, in this state of affairs, those equal adjacent angles must add up to 180 degrees. If this angle is alpha and this angle is beta, then we know alpha plus beta beta equals 180, and if the lines are perpendicular, then alpha and beta must be equal, so that this could be rewritten as two copies of alpha equals 180, and so of course the angles themselves must in fact be right angles. Phew, I am glad that's settled. Knowing what perpendicular lines are, let's see which of these options we can knock out. Let's start with slope. Will the slope of a pair of perpendicular lines always be the same? Of course not! Lines with the same slope are what we in the business call parallel. They look like this, if you look at them in real life upon a tiled floor. But within the warm and familiar embrace of the Euclidean plane, parallel lines look like that. Parallel lines have the same slope, not perpendicular ones. So this is not one of the key features which will be the same for any pair of perpendicular lines. We'll just go ahead and eliminate slope. Next up, x-intercept and y-intercept. Do perpendicular lines always have these in common? No, don't be ridiculous, my god. It's possible that perpendicular lines could have the same x-intercept or the same y-intercept, but they can't possibly have both in common, and they don't have to have either in common. Since perpendicular lines meet at a right angle, and they can't meet anywhere else, as long as that meeting place isn't on the x or y axes, the perpendicular lines will fail to have common x or y intercepts. So then, two more options eliminated. Let's go back up top to decreasing slash increasing. Will two perpendicular lines always be decreasing? Will two perpendicular lines always be increasing? Uh, no. Quite the opposite. If one line is going up, its perpendicular friend has got to be going down. And of course, vice versa. If one's going down, the perpendicular friend has got to be going up. There is a potential alternative interpretation of this option, however. These two options down here, x and y intercepts, were separate. They weren't smushed together with a forward slash between them. Since these two options are smushed together with a forward slash between them, maybe we're supposed to regard this option as perpendicular line pairs will be one decreasing and one increasing. In that case, we would mark this true. I'm gonna call it true and move on to these last two, domain and range. The OP said the only options he thought could be the same were the domain and the range. The domain is the set of all X values where the line is defined. Often it's just described as the numbers you can plug in. Look at this line. It spans the entire X axis, going forever to the left and forever to the right. That means we could plug in any X value we like and get a corresponding Y value on the line. If we draw a perpendicular to this line, same thing. It's a bit steeper, but still it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So indeed, their domains are the same. We'd say the domain of each line is the set of real numbers, which you can write with a cool double stroke R like this. The lines are defined at every value of X. The range is similar, but instead of being the X values where the line is defined, the range is the set of Y values the line attains. And as you can see, both of the lines go up forever, and down forever, so they take on every y value eventually. 
Hence, the ranges of these perpendicular lines are also the same, the set of real numbers once again. But the key question is will the domains and will the ranges always be the same for any pair of perpendicular lines? Can you think of a line that doesn't take on every Y value? Unfortunately, yes. Any horizontal line that's parallel to the x-axis will take on only a single y-value. Worse still, a line perpendicular to a horizontal is vertical and takes on only a single x-value. So these perpendicular lines do not have the same domain and they don't have the same range. And ah, oh, rats, they don't have the decreasing, increasing thing either. This line isn't increasing or decreasing because its Y values don't change. And this line isn't increasing or decreasing because its X values don't change. To increase means that the Ys go up as the Xs go up, but each of these lines are constant in one of those variables. What a disaster. All right, so we might think this is a bit of a problem. We were supposed to check which key features would be the same, but we've concluded none of them will be the same. This feels like a problem, but it doesn't have to be. It would have been nice if the problem threw in an if any right here, but still there's nothing saying that we must check any particular number of these features. So if you ask me, there's nothing wrong with checking zero of them. After all, zero is a number just like any other. Even though it was invented to describe the number of skips on NAS's debut Illmatic, it's still just a number. On the other hand, if you think we were meant to check at least one option, then it seems the problem must have an error. Because here we are after some intense critical thinking, having checked none of these options. We can still get out of this erroneous pickle though, we just have to wave the magic wand of context. I've taken an algebra class before, and I recall these vertical lines being regarded as a bit dirty, a bit like a reprehensible and unmentionable creature. If students are used to considering only lines that aren't vertical, lines that can be written in slope-intercept form, then there is hope yet to check one of these options. Unfortunately, I'm old. So let's look at an algebra textbook to get a refresher on how lines are commonly regarded. Ah uh, yes, I suppose my ultra rare holographic Texas edition Larson's Algebra 1 will have to do. And here on page 216, we can see them define linear equations. They say a linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line, such as the equation in... Ugh, Ah, uh, rats, they're using the standard form, AX plus BY equals C. Lots of students love slope-intercept form, but slope-intercept form only works for linear functions, where Y is a function of X. In a vertical line, Y is not a function of X. For a particular X value, we don't get one particular Y, we get all of the Y's. And this is prohibitive for the weak and frail slope-intercept form. However, the standard form of a line can deal with it no problem. Just set B equal to zero, and you're going to get a vertical line with a fixed X value. So if students are using standard form and are comfortable with all exotic types of lines, then I'm afraid the only correct possibility here is to leave it blank. But if perchance Chance the students in this class are only considering lines where y is a function of x, that is, they're not vertical, then this question would have a more proper answer. Note that if we rule out the vertical line, then we also rule out horizontal lines. That's because in this problem, we're considering pairs of perpendicular lines, and horizontals are perpendicular to verticals. So if we don't get one, then we don't get the other. In this more restricted environment, all pairs of perpendicular lines are more or less like this. They will always have the real numbers as their domain, and the real numbers as their range. So in that situation, we could check this 
and check this. And you could even check decreasing slash increasing if you go with that silly interpretation I mentioned earlier, that perpendicular lines occur in increasing decreasing pairs. One last thing before we go, it might seem a little hand wavy to say, yeah, perpendicular lines will always have the reals as their domain and as their range. How do we know that? Well, the domain is easy enough. Remember, right now we're assuming all of our lines can be written like this because we're only considering linear functions. And clearly we can plug any real number x into this equation. You would just multiply it by m and add b. No problems, so for sure the domain is all real numbers. But how do we know that the line will eventually take on every possible y value to give us this range? If I give you a particular y value, say why not, could you always show me the x value that would produce that value of y? And the answer is yes. You'd say just take the equation of our line and replace y with that given y value y not. Then subtract b from both sides, then divide everything by m and swap sides just for kicks. You then claim that this x value is the one that will produce the desired y value y not. But you divided by m, I say, what if m is zero? But then you remind me that we agreed to rule out perpendicular pairs with the vertical, which means we also ruled out horizontals, which means there's no slopes of zero. Then just to shut me up for good, you give me an example. Say y equals 2x plus 3, and we want to find the x that produces a y of 101. Just follow this formula. So for x, we plug in 100, 1 minus 3 divided by 2, and you can see out pops 101. This is a process that math students learn to prove that a function is surjective, which means the function maps onto every value of its codomain. That's maybe a few too many vocab words for a dumb video about a line though. Anyways, I must extend my sincerest appreciation for your attention to this exposition. I invite you to elucidate your reflections on this linear conundrum within the comments module below, and I encourage you to subscribe to partake regularly in the most erudite and distinguished mathematical discourse available in the digital domain. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untucked the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull my brain and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so